Hello everyone, this is Bruno with a new segment called 10 Minutes or Less with Bruno No BS. A very simple casual interview. Today I have the honor to interview one of the most incredible person in our roofing industry. A legend, a man. This guy is Frank Baker, one of the founders, owners of Baker Roofing. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, Bruno. How are you? I'm doing good. So far, so good. Tell me. How long have you been in the roofing industry? Bruno, I celebrated last month my 52nd consecutive year of full-time employment at Baker Roofing Company. Unbelievable. So you started at a very young age. Uh, when did you realize roofing would be a career for you? Roofing became a career for me almost by accident. I have a brother who is the co-owner of Baker Roofing Company named Prentice Baker. Uh, 1965, he graduated from Wake Forest University and took a job in a plumbing supply distributor. Uh, my dad was running our very small family business at that time. And in 1966, he had a severe heart attack and my mother asked my brother to come back to work at Baker and take a leave of absence from his current job. Uh, and he came back. And in 1969, I was drafted out of Wake Forest, reported right. for my physical, and was declined by the government. That was a Friday afternoon. I walked around the Block to where our office Did you get upset or you were a little bit relieved? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit of both, right? <laughs> I said, brother, I got nothing to do Monday morning. Have you got something I can come down here and work on? Because I had already withdrawn from weight since I had had a bad draft lottery number. I was number right. five for that year. So I went to work that uh, Monday, March 16th in 1969 and he and I have both been here every day since. Wow, uh, that's incredible. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of Baker Roofing? I know Baker is one of the oldest uh, roofing company in the nation. Can you tell me uh, you know, a little bit of the culture and uh, when a Baker Roofing started? Baker Roofing was started by my grandfather uh, with a partner as Baker and Rawls Tin Shop in Raleigh in 1915. Uh, my grandfather worked in that business for 15 years and then in 1930 he incorporated Baker Roofing Company after Mr. Rawls died. And we've had some name changes since that have been in continuous operation we feel as Maker Roofing Company since 1915. Did oh. so. your grandfather ever thought Baker Roof would be this big? Oh, no. No, my, my grandfather had no education, was born and uh, raised in Johnston County, North Carolina, which is about 35, 40 miles away from Raleigh. When he was 12 years old, he packed a donkey with all of his belongings and moved to Raleigh and made a career choice to become a townsmith. And from that, he worked for Mr. Rawls at Rawls Tin Shop for about a decade. And then he became partners in 1915 and started Baker and Rawls. So our, our history has been as a sheet metal shop, and then as the decades progressed, we became a full-scale roofer. So Baker Roofing was not a given, uh, it was uh, completely hard work and yeah. and family-owned business. It's not like, hey, I'm giving this to you. No, you guys work hard. Your grandfather worked hard to, to create an empire that now Baker Roofing has a legacy that is passing uh, family to family to family. And that's what I like about Baker Roofing. It was not 
hey, this is someone that had money and decided to create a company. No, as you said, as you mentioned, your grandfather had nothing but just you know a muscle here, a muscle there, and it start right. working hard and uh, and build an empire, right? That's right. We uh, we are now in our fifth generation. My uh, brother's uh, granddaughter works in our marketing department, and she is our fifth generation. We have uh, my brother is. 78, I'm 73, uh, we have the next generation of ownership and leadership at Baker are Mark Lee, our president, John Matthews, is executive vice president, and my son Dylan is also an executive vice president. Okay. And they will be the three owners as we go forward. Uh, in fact, they really have done most of the heavy lifting at Baker Roofing in the last decade. I look at myself more as a consultant than I do as actually a person that manages the company on a day-to-day -day basis. And these guys have uh, transformed our company in ways that I would have never seen in the last 10 years. So I give well, it only you know, passed, like I say, generations uh, through generations. As your grandfather never thought in a million years this company would become such a big thing, then he passed to the sons and then... It keep continuing growing, and the fathers and the sons, and I keep continuing growing because you know uh, the new generation incorporate you know it's a new aspect for the company, right? Absolutely. What do you see for the future of a new generation for the people coming up, for the people coming to the roofing industry right now? Well, we have done a very good job, in my opinion, of having a good recruiting program. So we are always reaching out to try to find new people with new ideas. Uh, we spend a lot of effort to educate those people once they are on board. And we think that uh, the industry will evolve in the way it always has. Absolutely. I'm old enough that I remember when we had, we didn't have single ply roofing for two decades when I was working at Baker. So, uh, you know, that's the standard for our industry in many ways now. Uh, Absolutely. We, we don't even know in 10 years from now, uh, they might come up with a new technology. That's going to happen and we need to have people who are intelligent, progressive thinkers that are nimble and can respond to new environments and new methods, new techniques. Any messages out there for the people watching this video? It could be related to anything? I think that uh, all we can ask and what we look for in an employee is someone who wants to improve incrementally. You know, if you if you have a passion for your job, and passion for your job to me is wanting to work as hard and as intelligently as you can. Uh, if you also have the desire to improve incrementally every day, every week, every month, we can all learn how to do what we do better. And that should be what we strive for. So I would say if you go out today, try to do some of those three things and make yourself better. That'll Absolutely. You don't want to be an average Joe, you know. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you, Frank. Thank you so much. Uh, next time in North Carolina, I'm going to visit and lunch is on me, okay? That sounds great. All right, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.